My lab is currently spinning out into a biotech company. Humanize the mouse adaptive immune system to develop a biologic. Everyone tends to have their own role and they're just very good at what they do. I am starting to feel a plateau. Most 90 to 95% of the people that they're hiring are all people that they already knew. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is V and I'm currently working as a research assistant in genetics and stem cells at the University of Cambridge. Nine months ago, I posted a video on what it's like working as a research assistant in academia. Since then, some things have changed and so have my opinions. So I thought I'd give an update on how my lab spin-out project has impacted me in terms of my day-to-day -day life in the lab, learning about the process of an academic lab spinning out into a biotech company, and dealing with colleagues. I also wanted to touch on some of the things that have essentially stayed the same, and in general just how my thoughts and opinions have developed over the past year. So let's start with a little bit of background about my lab. For confidentiality reasons, I will not be sharing the name of my lab, but what I can say is that I'm currently working on a project to humanize the mouse adaptive immune system to develop a biologic for therapeutic use in cancer immunotherapy. It is a relatively big project involving approximately 20 people, which is quite large for an academic lab. Personally, I'm working on genetically engineering large constructs called bacterial artificial chromosomes. Backs. Essentially, we want to change the mouse genome sequence into human. We then transfect these constructs into mouse embryonic stem cells, microinject them, and then do an embryo transfer. This generates chimeras, which then should produce germline transmission. Chimeras, or in this case a chimeric mouse, is an organism that comprises of two different cell lineages that originate from two different zygotes. Just a quick disclaimer, I'm not actually doing any sort of mouse work, I do not have an animal license, but I have worked shadowed some of the animal technicians from our team. I'm primarily responsible for the in vitro molecular biology work and also cell culture. And from all of that, you can probably gauge that I'm involved in generating a mouse model for our spin-out, which is the first stage of the pipeline. As briefly mentioned, a major update that I don't think I've mentioned before on this channel is that my lab is currently spinning out into a biotech company. A spin-out means when an academic lab sees therapeutic or business potential in their research, they tend to transition into a startup or biotech company. And with that sort of major change comes changes to my role as a research assistant as well. In terms of working hours, they have pretty much stayed quite consistent. Over time, I found a routine that works for my supervisor and for myself. So usually I come in between 9 to 9.30 a.m. and leave between 5.30 to 6 p.m. However, this is not the case for all of my colleagues. Some of my more senior colleagues tend to work longer hours in order to meet investor deadlines. My line manager also works longer hours, but he tends to be quite mindful of my working hours as well. Despite my working hours being relatively similar, to a few months before, my workload has actually increased. And before you say that that doesn't quite add up, let me explain. With a spin-out transition, new people join, but there are some people who also choose to progress their careers elsewhere, and our grant will be ending in about a year's time and people do need to consider their next steps. For example, a major person in tissue culture has left, and it was difficult to find someone to replace immediately because a one-year contract is also not very appealing because of its lack of stability. Whilst I had to step in to do a lot of the tissue culture work and also restart up on tissue culture reagents, it was an opportunity for me to learn how to culture embryonic stem cells. It's a responsibility that I otherwise wouldn't have had if someone hadn't had left. In a bigger team, and especially in a biotech company, everyone tends to have their own role and they're just very good at what they do. You very seldom branch off into other groups. Although I very much like my colleague who left, it did create opportunities for growth in my role, which was also great for my CV. So with more work, how am I still working the same number of hours? After my six month probation period where I was trained in a bunch of basic techniques like PCR, cell culture, cloning, recombinering, etc. I pretty much learned most techniques that I use frequently right now. So now what usually happens is that my supervisor tells me what needs to be done and he kind of just leaves me to it but of course I update him on a daily basis. But all in all, there's just far less micromanagement. I grew confident in techniques because I've just done them so many times. Through that, I've also found ways to be more efficient and I also make less technical errors. All in all, I'm just able to get more work done in a shorter period of time. For example, it usually takes me about a whole afternoon to complete 800 PCR samples, but now it only takes me approximately one and a half to two hours. I also have a better understanding of my project scope, I understand abbreviations better, and because I also start to understand the purpose of each experiment, I'm able to foresee the next steps. In terms of my daily experiments, a lot of it has actually 
always stayed the same. Some of the key experiments I do involve PCR genotyping, maintaining mouse embryonic stem cells and feeder cells, cloning, plasmid preparation, and analyzing sequencing data. Whilst I have definitely learned a lot in my first few months and even first year here, I am starting to feel a plateau. And this is because the things that I do are extremely repetitive. But what keeps me interested in my project is knowing how the work that I do contributes downstream. In any line of work, it's important for me to understand the therapeutic potential and also scientific contributions of the work that I am involved in. I personally need to work with purpose in order to be fulfilled. To have a more in-depth understanding of my project, I attend weekly lab meetings where different colleagues present some of their data and findings of the week. It helps me understand the pipeline and also how the mouse model that I'm helping to contribute to create is contributing to their work. Now that I've talked a little bit about my project, I wanted to mention some things outside of the lab. The search involves a lot more than just the physical lab work. It's a lot of teamwork, communication, and also getting to know your team. And that brings me on to the topic of people. With the spin-out project, they're hiring more people to do different jobs. For example, bioinformaticians, patent attorneys, pipeline advisors, project managers, and also the finance team. In my experience, it's actually really cool to network with all of these different people to see how their work contributes and fits into the pipeline and also ties everything together. And what I witnessed and learned is that building a company is really a team effort. It really takes people with experience, grit, and ambition in order to kickstart a company. A really important tip that I'd like to share is to network well and never burn bridges. Especially in the Cambridge biotech scene, everybody seems to know someone who also knows someone else. When I entered my lab, there were so many colleagues that knew people from the Sanger Institute, AstraZeneca, different biotech companies in Cambridge, Cancer Research UK, and also so much more. Word travels around pretty fast, so if a colleague has had a career transition, people will likely know if they had a salary raise from the new company that they've joined. If there's a new construction or even a lab group disbanding, people know instantly because they want to secure a lab space because there are very limited lab spaces currently in the Cambridge market. Something I also noticed about my lab spin-out hiring process is that almost 90 to 95% of the people that they're hiring are all people that they already knew prior. For a startup, I can see how this makes sense because it is a safer option. It is a lot of hassle to hire somebody new, find out that they're terrible, and then try to fire them. Even if you do decide to have a career change or move to a completely different country, if you're staying in a relatively similar field, never burn bridges. You never know who you might bump to in the future, and sometimes all it takes is a positive recommendation for you to land a new job. But sometimes it's also all it takes for a negative word for you to end your career. With that being said, I am considering making a video about workplace etiquette in a research setting and how that differs to sort of a more corporate setting. If that's something that you're interested in or there's something in this video that I mentioned that you'd like me to elaborate on, please just let me know in the comment section below and I'll definitely keep that in mind. And reflecting on my past year and a bit working as a research assistant, there is one key thing that I actually learned about myself. And I thought that I'd share it here because we're all about honesty. So I usually have lunch with my colleagues and most of them are 10, 20, 30 years older than me. They normally talk about the news, new scientific discoveries, housing market, their children, and topics that I'm not normally used to engaging with. The first few months were a bit overwhelming for me because I just didn't really know what they were talking about. And whilst I felt like I've learned a lot, I also felt small. I felt like I had nothing to contribute to the conversation and that made me overthink and go down a rabbit hole. I wanted to prove to these real really experienced people that I deserve this job. Something that I realized was that I actually determine my worth a lot based on my quality of work. I guess that's why I felt desperate to prove to them that I had something insightful to say about US politics, a new COVID-19 drug that has launched. You get the idea. And now I know that it's okay for me to not know everything. I am far less experienced in this field and in life compared to most of my colleagues. And as Socrates said, I know that I know nothing. To prove myself, I started to shift my perspective to be more curious, to listen more and to ask more questions. Especially because I'm in a more junior position, I almost have this green card to ask all the dumb questions. And more often than not, no one's actually paying attention to how much I contribute to a conversation. So here's just a reminder to myself and maybe to some of you who are just recently starting a job to give yourself some grace because you've made it this far and you deserve a pat on the back. If there's something specific that you'd like me to talk more about in another video, please leave that in the comment section below. I recently also made an Instagram account called Biomed with V, so feel free to message me there or follow me there for more short form content. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!